Um, so uh, maybe somewhat unusually, we have a large team of facilitators here today. So you can play fun math with many of us. I'd like to say a few words about our group and then uh, we'll each introduce ourselves. So probably many of you are familiar with the Julia Robinson Mathematics Festival, and maybe you participated in some of their programs. During the pandemic, festivals were not possible, so JRMF started to put all their activities online and they conducted festivals and math circles on the web with the help of a lot of volunteers as facilitators. And when schools started to open up, then GM, GRMF wanted to go back to their usual focus, the in-person festivals. But a group of volunteers, many of whom you see here today, thought that the circles were very valuable for students and teachers and adults. And they decided to continue running them online once a month using the GRMF activities. So. This is what our volunteer organization has been doing. We call ourselves the JRMF Community Math Circle. And each month we pick an activity and prepare to facilitate it in a math circle with students in multiple breakout rooms based on their age and experience. We also have an adult room where adults, teachers, parents, grandparents can come and engage with the activity. There we talk a lot about the pedagogy, figure out ideas, how to adapt the activity to different situations, and also just play with, with the math. Um, I know many of you might be looking for good activities, low floor, high ceiling activities for your classrooms. These um, are very good ones generally. And hope you will see a few nice ones today too that you can adapt to your classroom or your learners. Uh, if you enjoyed today's activities, we would also like to invite you to participate and we welcome everyone who would think of facilitating with our math circle or simply come first and look, uh, participate in the adult room, see what it's like and then, um, Definitely, if you like it, then we welcome everyone who would like to join us. So now um, maybe I'll stop sharing and our team members can introduce themselves. So let me uh, call on people. So Skana, please. Hi, everybody. I'm Skana. I'm from Santa Barbara. And in here in Santa Barbara, I run math circles and I coach math teams and I run math camps in the summer for kids, which is really fun. Um, and I met Dave Ockley a long time ago. He had lots of hair back then, gorgeous hair, and uh, haven't seen him for a long time. So I will pass this on to someone else unmuted, Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Heller. Um, I'm in the Boston area. After uh, many years in computer science research, I decided to try to teach math to kids. Uh, I worked for JRMF a little bit, and I've been, I now uh, have a group of kids in something I call math explorations, where we do non curricular stuff, very much like math circle stuff. Uh, and that's that's what I do. I'm glad to be here. I guess, uh, Sayonita. Thank you, Steve. Hi, everyone. I'm Shainita Ghoshadra, and I'm joining from Sacramento, California. And here I teach, uh, I'm a faculty at Sacramento State. I do uh, some outreach activities in the community work with the K through 12 teachers. Um, and I'm really happy to be here and collaborating with you all today in some fun activities. Thank you. And I will call on Fred. Well, thanks, Andy. I'm Fred Gluck. I live in Longmont, Colorado, which is a few miles from Boulder, which is probably something more people would know about. I uh, started volunteering with the JRMF in one of the last pre-pandemic in-person math festivals. 
which was held in Denver, and then went virtual when J.R. Mifflin went virtual in March of that year. So I've been uh, around doing the math webinars and now the math circles since uh, basically the beginning. Uh, although I've spent most of my time since I retired from engineering in the 90s, uh, volunteering in the Colorado Public Schools, which I still do, although now it's remote. I don't uh, haven't been in the classroom since uh, just before the pandemic. So because I also moved from the school where I took the volunteer. So let's see who's next. Uh, how about Peter? Hi, I'm Peter, and I'm from Bay Village, Ohio, on the shores of Lake Erie. And uh, after many, many years as a manufacturer, I thought it might be fun to teach mathematics because I'd found it so useful as in my profession. And uh, I did that for about uh, 15 years before retiring. And uh, I found many teacher groups very helpful to making me a better teacher. And so now that I'm retired, I have uh, engaged in trying to support teachers and students who want to learn math through organizations such as uh, JRMF. And uh, I will choose Daniel next. So I'm Daniel. I'm from South Alabama, and I am currently working on my master's in mathematics in Alabama. And I've been helping with various JRMF online events in the JRMF community math circle for about two, three years. Yep. Three years. So is there anyone else who hasn't gone or was I the last? Okay. All right. I just want to mention that we're an hour earlier here in California, but if we'd only waited until tomorrow, we'd be the same time as Arizona <laughs> and really tired. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right, uh, Dave, uh, is there anything else we should do before starting with the math? I think he might have left this area for a moment. Maybe we should just start. All right. So today you are going to see three activities. The first one is apple picking. And we are going to do this one uh, very similarly as we would do it in our monthly math circle. We usually very briefly introduce the activity. So someone talks about it, shows the rules, and then we do go to breakout rooms where small groups with facilitators or a facilitator will explore more about the problem and take it in different directions. So I'm going to introduce the activity. And uh, after that, hopefully we can all go to different breakout rooms with uh, the facilitators here and think about the strategies and the fun part of this activity. So let me let me share my screen again. Okay. So this is the uh, JRMF puzzles page. And apple picking is one of the first activities there. So when you click on this, um, this app starts up. And it is going to uh, explain the game here. So apple picking is a game. We have apples in one row and two people take turns taking away apples. On your turn, you can take away either one or two apples. But if you take two, the two have to be side by side. 
So here the tutorial shows how this app will work. If we click on one, then we can take away one apple. If we click on two, then it kind of highlights apples. Are, that we supposed, are you supposed to be showing us this happening? I just the apple picking app. I, we're not seeing anything. Oh. Scroll down, scroll down. Okay. Gabriella, I think you could have scrolled down. Can you see it oh, now? Now I see it, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I Somehow my computer is behaving strangely. Um, so uh, should I go back then to where I started from? So this is the uh, JRMF puzzles page. This is the app picking activity. When you click on it, the app will start and it usually starts with a tutorial that is explaining <clears throat> uh, the the rules of the game all right so as i said you can you have the line of apples and you have the choice on your turn to take one or uh, two apples if you take two the two have to be side by side um, you can reset, you can play one person against another, or we can play against the computer. And there are a few questions here that sort of naturally come up with a game like this. Is there a strategy so that player one or player two could win? Um, yes. So I think we can maybe at this point, if there are no questions, go to breakout rooms. And in the breakout rooms, we'll clarify your questions you may have about the game too. One. One. Need to be. So with what number? Eight. Eight. Now I will choose one and you're the winner. <laughs> Tell me All what right. number. One. Right. And so you... you are the winner. Mm -hmm. So there's a strategy. <laughs> well, let's see whether there's a strategy. So maybe yeah. let's try to reset it. Okay, let's reset. Do you want to go to the next number? Nine, okay. Mm, we can play one more with eight, maybe. Yeah. And the eight. Okay, so I will be the first player again, Miss Bradley. I choose one. Miss Bradley, do you want one? Do you want to choose one apple or two apples? Two. Two. What number? Um seven and eight. Seven and eight. So I will choose one. There you go. So it's your turn. Okay, I'll choose one apple and I'll do five. Okay, I will choose one. I will choose six. Okay, I'll choose one and do four. Okay, now I'm the winner. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to think. Oh. Oh, do you I think it could have gone in another way? Um, yeah, if like if I choose two apple, I might not be the winner. So it's like, okay. yes, right? Uh if if you uh, I'm wondering if you click undo, does it go back? Undo? I think uh, my last oh, one. Oh, and one more time. Okay, so at this point it was your turn. Uh second. Miss Miss Bradley, is that a, a, a? But this one you cannot choose. Oh, you can for sure. And, you can. I mean, you can only choose one because Why? if it's two, remember it's side to side. So I'm still be the winner. But they are side by side. If I had two, oh, okay, right. Oh, Miss Oh, okay. 
So you can be the winner if you choose. If I two. chose two. Yeah, if you okay. choose two, get three and four, you're the winner. Okay. Okay. Because I thought at first it should be side by side. You can choose, like, it should be three. So if it's two, you can. Right. So the two mm -hmm. just have to be yeah, just to, uh, beside uh, each other, right? Uh, okay. Okay. So. Oh, okay. This way. Okay. So this one went slightly differently. Mm -hmm. Would you like to play with different number of apples? Different number of apples, nine. Let's so I will, nine. I will be the first player. I'll choose two. You always choose two. <laughs> I, just, I said I, I will choose two, but I just press one anyway. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. So second player, Bradley, is Bradley. Okay. Um, let's see. I'll choose two and do five and six. Five and six. Yeah, I choose two, three, and four. And then I'll choose one. Um, uh, eight. Just one. Oh. Okay. Oh, I see what's going to happen. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I see you what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whichever one I choose, she's going to win because yeah. it's the last <laughs> apple Sandy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me choose nine. So I will be the one. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Okay. We can use this for the little ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's let's and try to do that. And I think we have a, a new participant, Miss Claw. Oh, we have one. Can you hear us? Yes, uh-huh. I was left in the other room, so I didn't know where to go. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so we are playing. W would you like to be one of the players in our next game? Let me watch first. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, maybe we should do this. Uh, we did not introduce ourselves. And please say the name we should call you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am Gabriella. I am a faculty member at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and I've been doing math circles for a long, long time. Well, I'm Trish and I'm from Kayenta and Miss um, Bradley's colleague, so teaching first grade. And we've been doing math circles for a while too. <laughs> nice. And you said Tersha? Trisha? Trisha, Trisha. Trisha. Uh, I'm sorry, Trisha, yes, sorry, I'm sorry, okay, uh, Miss Bradley, I'll go again, okay, I think I like this game, okay, <laughs> I'll choose a oh, player one, all right, and... uh, let, let's see, we have a, another okay. person, Miss Harvey, Sorry, I can only see a name. Can you hear us? You are muted. Excuse me, I just came in. This is Harvey, Miss Miss Harvey. Miss Harvey, okay. Yes. Uh, is that how we should call you? I just joined right now, so. Oh, all right. Uh, so have, have you haven't even seen the game, right? At the beginning. Uh, no, I was trying to log on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are going to play a new game. Uh, this is called Apple Picking. And uh, maybe uh, one of you could explain what this game is going to do. And then you will see it in action. 
Okay. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're, um, there's two players. Uh, each player will get to choose one or two apples. And the last person who picks an apple wins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. Um, who, who would like to play? I can go first. All right. So okay, I'll pick two apples. Eight and nine. So I'll be the first player. Oh, I'm the second the player second this player. time. You're the second okay. player. <laughs> I'm the second player. I'll choose two, one and two. Okay. And I'll choose um one apple and number seven. I choose two, three, and four. Okay, I'll choose two, five, and six. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I got the strategy down now. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, let's play another game. Make it ten. So, uh, make it, make it oh, nine. Oh, wow, okay. Or would you like to play with ten? We, we can. Okay. So who would like to play? Trisha, would you like to try it? I can try. I'll pick three and four. Okay. So two, two apples. Yes. Great. Great. Player two. This is Harvey. Um, do I um, use my cursor or? No, I, I'm, or... I, I'm yeah. the one who's oh, okay. I'll I'll play. Um two nine and ten. Oh I'm sorry. Oh you can undo nine. it. Oh wait, 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 yeah, you're right. I can undo it. Then okay, two apples. There you go. I'll pick Player two. One. Um let's do six and seven. Um, one, number eight. I'll pick one, number one. Two, number two and five. Oh, you, you can't, we can't do this. Oh. It should be okay. side to side. So when oh, okay. I, you take two, they have to be one, side by side. One. And five. Here one. <laughs> Number two. And the last. And that's the Do they have to be side by side to pick them? If yeah, you if you want to have two apples. Okay. Yes. So that is one of the rules. So do you start seeing any strategy? Do you think either of the players have a strategy to win? I think that one of the strategies is probably looking ahead and see how many are left and see which ones are side by side. Mm -hmm. Would you like to play another game? Mm -hmm. And maybe think about that. Let's, let's try that, maybe. So who would like to be player one? I can do two and four, picking two of them. Okay. Do you want to pick two apples? Yes. Three and four? Let's do two and three. Two and three. Okay. You would like to be a second player. Yeah, I'll do the second player. I'll choose two apples. This one. I'll choose two, five, and six. Okay. So maybe let's stop there.
Mm -hmm. do, we do we know who is going to win? So the next ones, they have to pick one each time. Mm -hmm. And then time. you pick, I pick, and you're the win. So player two has to take one. Mm -hmm. That leaves three separate apples. Player one has to take one. That mm -hmm. leaves two. Now it's player two's turn again. And then player one will take the last one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So at this point, we see that player one is going to win. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you undo this last step. If I just choose. But this was good for player one, right? Mm -hmm. So player one took five and six, and that turned out to be a very good move because with that, player one ensured that they can win since four separate apples were left. Right? Okay, so we are starting to see some some structure, right? Mm -hmm. and we can we can play the game, or we can uh, try again, right? So at this point, there was this very kind of nice pattern of apples left. So if you were to take the outside apples first, then you'd have a better chance of getting the two inner ones two at a time. You know what I mean? If someone picked one in 10, you could clear that out of the way and then have the two inside. So the last, the person to take the last two would win. It would actually depend if they take five and six or four and five, if they were to take two. Because yeah, if they, they take five yeah, and it, six, they yeah. still have four and seven individual. True. Let's see. Maybe we can go back. Uh, could, could you please reset it? Reset? Mm -hmm. Right? So what, what do you think would be a good first move? So who needs to win, one or two? Well, what do you think? The the good first step is to um put one like individual alone. So I think the good first step would be either the person either pick one, which would be either two or nine, that will isolate one and ten. Or either if they were to pick two, they can pick two and three or eight and nine. So this one. It just depends if they pick one or two apples. Okay, let's try. So you want me to get two and three? Yeah. Okay. So if you have two apples, what will be the second player needs to? So second player wants to win two, right? A strategy that second player can use is pick one apple. Well, I guess one or two would either be five or five if it's one, and then five, five and six if it's two. So that will isolate one and four. Okay, let's do two, five and six. Yes. Oh, this goes back almost to the same thing that was just the previous game. Yes. If they were to isolate one, four, seven, and 10, then they would pick eight and nine as a pair. But if they were looking ahead, I mean, if they were really thinking, then they would see the next several steps to see who would win because their decision would be based, do they pick one apple or do they pick two apples? Do they pick eight and nine or just eight? They look at the steps, the next steps. Mm -hmm. If the, the players... Next, yeah, the next step of the other player. Mm -hmm. If I get this, second, first, second, first, it's the first one. If I get two, two, first, second, first. Okay. So he that person, um, group two, if they want to, um, well, no, never mind. I don't think so. 
I was thinking if they want to win, then they would pick only one apple and they would put, pick eight. Okay, so please undo that step then, right? That's what you're suggesting. Oh, that's let's, un let's undo, uh, no, like undo player two's last step, right? That's what you are saying. No, um, just to continue oh. on the one that was already. So get this one. So player one will take what? Well, I, I thought you said if player one takes two, then player one wins. Whoever's the next player's turn. I don't know who's player because it's not lit up or doesn't. Oh, is it it says oh there, it's up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so player one's turn. So player one, right? What mm -hmm. what can player so one? They, they get two and two. A player one can get one apple or two apples. Um, I think they would choose one apple, which is eight. Eight. let's do eight. Let's do eight, and the second one. Second, first, second, first. The first player will win if the second player choose two. I think either yes, way. But maybe then the second player doesn't want to do that. If I, if because she player one will still win no matter what, I think. Well, I don't know. Because they do so have. If I get the either. two, player one. Player two, player one will win if I get two apples. But if I mm -hmm. get one apple, player one, which player one? Two, one, two, one. Oh, still. Okay. Yeah, let's okay. mm -hmm. let's take that one. Okay, so player. So player two takes nine. One. And then player two will win. Player one will take this. This. Yeah, player two will be the winner. So player two will win this time. Uh -huh. Okay, can we go back? <laughs> so maybe click. Right. So at this point, it was player one's turn. And player one decided to take one apple, and that was eight. Right? Uh -huh. And that turned out to be not so good because now player two also took one apple and we had these four isolated apples left and player two now won the game right the number one will win this time oh no two will win again two, two will win right so mm -hmm. if you undo these steps to once one more please right this point right it's player one's turn so it was not so good to take just one apple number eight what mm. could have player one do get have... two apples player one could take two apples right which two eight. Oh, so this one either this or this Two. If he picks eight and nine, then player one will win. Eight and nine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then they have no choice but to take one and it will be player yeah, one, one each. winner. So this one, player one will win. Yes. Two, two, one, two, one. One will be the winner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two, one, two, one. So player one could win from here. But so we are seeing the end game, right? Yes. That when there are fewer number of apples left, we, we see better what is happening. Mm -hmm. So what if we start with fewer number of apples and try to think about strategy there? What if you really go back and you just have two? It doesn't go back more. More? 
Four, uh, I mean, four is the smallest number there. No, okay. Does it go to two? No, it, two would be too simple. Because well, two. Ju let's just think about <laughs> it for just a second. Okay. Player one will choose two. Winner is that okay? Okay. Player one choose the middle one. The middle one. If player one chooses the middle one, what happens? Two then will be player one. one will be the winner. Mm -hmm. oh. oh no. One will be the winner. One will win, right? Mm -hmm. So when when you have these types of, of games and a uh, strategy many times is easier to see if you start with really, really small numbers, right? So we know that with three apples, player one, the person who starts can win, right? Yeah, there's an advantage. There, there's definitely an advantage. Everyone sees that? Okay, so what about and and the advantage was that player one could take that middle apple. And then two separate ones are left. Player two cannot do anything. Just take one of them. And then the last one is for player one and player one wins. So what if we had four apples to start with? The players want to two. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have you have the chance. I, I mean, you will win. Player one will win. But if you just choose, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I will okay. just choose one, two. Okay, so it still depends to the next person. If well, but player one wants to win, right? Okay. So what should I'll player choose. one do as their first? Player one should pick two and three. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that will work out. Right? Player one wants to win, right? So choose, okay, so the best. choose two. They have to choose one, yeah. Player one choose one and then the winner. Mm -hmm. Player one wins, right? So they need to know what plane will for. They pick the middle middle two. Mm -hmm. So they pick the middle two and picking the middle worked with three, picking the middle two worked with four for player one's advantage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we ready to go to five? <laughs> Is there a good move now for player one? No. <laughs> Choose one. If he choose one. Oh, if they picked two, one and two. Pick two? Yes. One and two. What number? One and two? Oh, that still wouldn't work. Yeah. I was thinking the other way. If they were to pick one and two, then the other one, player two, would either be picking one or two. But mm -hmm. if they pick one and then if they pick four, then that ensures player two's win because player one would only pick the isolated three and five, one of them. Mm -hmm. And then player two would pick the last one. Right. But player one wants to win, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll shift to one. 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 Two. So what happens if player one takes? Oh, okay. What would you like to do? Just take, I'll take one. I would pick two and three. Two and three.
Okay, if I am player two, I would take one apple and that would be four. Player one will take one. And player two will player two would win, win right? Uh -huh. So somehow player one did not win. Maybe player one did not make a good choice at some point. Oh, at the beginning. So let's reset it. Let's figure out whether player one could have done something better. Remember when we had three or four apples, what was a good thing for the first move for player one? Choose one. Huh? Think back. Uh, for three, what was, if, if you go back to three apples for just a second. This is the first one. the middle one. one. Taking the middle one, right? So if you could undo this step, what if player one takes the middle one? Right, and this, this middle one. idea came up with three and four also. So player two, what can player two do? Player two, player two. One or this? Which one? One? Do you want me to take one or two or four or five? Well, if he if they pick two, then the other player wins because they pick two. So player one would win. So if they were to pick one, you can do one. And then player strategy, player one's strategy would be pick one again. Mm -hmm. And then one and one. And player two wins. Player one wins. Player one wins. Okay, so how did this go? Can we play it again? So if you reset it or, or start at the beginning. So player one took the middle apple, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think you said this very nicely, that if now player two takes two apples, either these two or the other two, then player one immediately wins mm -hmm. by taking the other set of two, right? If player two takes just one apple, which happened, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe player one takes apple number two. What can player one answer? By or taking one. Take one. Because that would be their strategy by now. Mm -hmm. Because if they pick the number one apple, then player two would win if they pick two. But if player one is using their strategy, they would just pick one and isolate the two. So player two doesn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Right. So no matter what player two did, if player one took that middle apple, player one won the game. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Now we have a strategy for three, four, and five. And it looks like player one could win in all those cases. Right? If player one plays right, of course, right? So according to the strategy. Okay, so does this work for six? Can player one win if we have six apples? I think if, um, if it's six apples, then player one, instead of picking one, they would pick three and four, the ones in the middle. And then it would be the same thing. Let's try that. Right? So again, player one goes for the middle, but now there's not one apple in the middle, but two of them. Mm -hmm. So now it's player two's turn. And again, if player two takes two apples, 
either one, one and two or five and six, then player two immediately lost, right? Yes. So player two will just take one apple on one of those sides, but then player one will also take one apple mm -hmm. on the other side. And now player two has no choice. And player one still wins, right? Is everyone convinced that player one has a winning strategy for six? Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's try seven. If you are player one, what would you do? Pick number four. Pick number four, right? So this middle idea seems to... But then the higher the number of apples, the more um, possibilities, is that the word? Mm -hmm. So what happens now if player two takes two apples on one of those sides? Say it again. So what happens now if player two takes two apples? Then and player one would win. Which side, right? Yeah, and player one would win. So let's let's do it. Let's play it out. How can player one still win? They pick two on the other side. Pick two on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Great. So player two picked two on one side, player one answers by picking two on That's the other two. side. And then player one. It's player two's turn. It's player two's turn, right? Yes. Player two doesn't really have a choice. Just take one apple, either of them. Oh. And player one. One. All right, so maybe it wasn't so good to take two apples for player two. Can we play it again where player two does a different first step? So player one, again, takes the middle. Let's see whether player two can counter this in any way. What do you think? Mm -hmm. one. I'll take if, she, if player two takes one. Mm -hmm. yes. Six. Okay. What should player one's answering step be? Player one should take um two of them. It doesn't matter which ones. <laughs> Then player one wins. Wait, two's turn to one, two, two and player turn. two would win. It's player one two would win. Okay, so maybe you want to undo so, uh, that. Uh, undo, yes. So player one does not. Okay, let's say play, player two took six. So, I mean, apple number six. <laughs> So what should player one's answer be to keep would, their advantage? Would take one apple. Would take one apple. I would take that one, right? Do you and see then, something nice happening? With and then player one would win. Player one would win, right? Again, we have a very nice symmetric picture with all those four, apple, four apples isolated. So player one now wins. But if player two took this two, one, two, one. If the player one get this two. Then two, player one, one wins, right? Two. 
the two will be the winner. Yes. So player one doesn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Right? Player one plays to win. So can, can you formulate what strategy player one would play to win? Um, To be the first to pick and to pick the middle. To pick the middle, right? And after that, what does player one do? So first step is pick the middle, which we can do whether we had an odd number of apples or even because we can take the middle two mm -hmm. if we had even number of apples, right? So after that, what would happen? To isolate the others. Ah, can I share my screen maybe for just a second? Um, actually, maybe share. multiple people can share. Okay, yeah. C can you see my screen? No. No. Let me, how can I unshare my screen? Stop sharing. There you go. Okay, then uh, breakout rooms will, will close in just a very little bit. So I wanted to make sure we, we see. So uh, player one chooses the middle one, right? Um, you see what the computer did here? Yeah, I was like computer thinking. <laughs> okay, so if I'm player one, I will do exactly what the computer did, but on the other side. Computer took another one. I will mimic, right? I will just mimic what the computer is doing. And then I can win, right? So if I reset it, again, middle strategy. And after I do this middle, whatever the computer is doing, I will simply do that same thing on the other side. So just reflect, mimic what the computer was doing but on the other side of that middle apple. So that think about be, this a, a little be, bit. I think that would be like the symmetry, copying the other side. Copying the other side, yeah. exactly, symmetry. right? The copy the three. Very nice, yes. So I, I think we'll be whisked back to the main room very, very soon. Uh, no, I, I think it would be nice if, if each breakout room shared their findings or what they were doing. Okay. So who was in room one? I was in room one. Does anybody okay. want to talk from my room or should I talk? I'll talk. Okay. But if you want to add anything. Um, so... We started with we started with a bunch of technical difficulties like microphone not working and others, you know, that kind of thing. So that took some time, but that often happens. We, um, and then we went to five apples in a row and we tried playing it, um, playing it as a group. And then everybody explored alone for a little while, playing against the computer. And people came up with the idea that taking the middle one, taking one, taking two meant that they lost. Taking one was better and, and taking the middle one was best. And they could um, usually win if they did that, but not quite always. So um, then we played as a team. Someone asked if four people could play. And I suggested that you know, with if I have four kids, I either set them up separately or we play as a team. And when you play as a team, you get to hear other people's ideas. And that's kind of nice to. Um, so we had one team where um, after collaborating, they did better. So that that worked well. And we went to we went from five to seven. We skipped the even numbers and we just stayed with odd numbers. So actually what I was describing now, we'd already gone to seven. So it was when we, I think when we went to seven is when we were doing that. 
And that's about all. Oh, I talked a little bit at the end. Um, I totally recommend um, if you happen to have someone who figures things out really fast, have them play the Mazare version, which is last one wins because it's so much harder. <laughs> so that'll keep them busy. Okay, room two. I was in room two with Stephanie, Anjali, Shirley, and Leanne. So uh, anyone from my group wants to volunteer? We um, have some kind of the same strategy starting at the middle. And it's true. Whenever I try to choose two apples, I always lost. I think that was some strategy for that game. Thank you, Anjali. And we tried five, six, and seven. And yeah, we did not have enough time to explore further. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's the strategy we our group also came up with. Thank you. Room three, we had Fred. Well, uh, we actually got to a number of it. We actually did some of the even ones and we got to the two dimensional, but I would like somebody else to tell me what we learned. So somebody in the room. Amy? Are you still there, Amy? <laughs> Did you say Fred? Is that me? Amy? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, well, actually, Fred, um, we started with the simple one with by three, by five, by seven, and then we just realized that um, if we pick the, f if the first player pick number one in the middle, then Surely the the first player will win. However, he also introduced as the one where the the last one, if the last one picks the last, then um I think it was the one loses the game or loses the, yeah it's it's very challenging though, and um we, we figured it out that maybe we could need more practice because it's really a very nice game activity for the kids. We also we, did a little bit on the two-dimensional one yeah. and found some sort of parallel thinking to the one-dimensional one. one. So but you also, you also introduced to us the one with the four by four, five by five, a little bit, and give us time to figure yeah. out the strategy that we need to, to do in order for us to you know either lose or win the game. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think I had room four. So uh, someone from room four would like to say what we did. Uh, Margaret or Trisha. Ms. Bradley, please. Talked about how the odd num um even numbers. We started with the middle number. Uh, whoever player one picked the middle number, and then um eliminating to where the sides had one, and it bounced back and forth. So the last person to pick the two usually would win. So that would leave player one winning. But if the last two numbers that were together, then um, if you could, if you didn't isolate them, then player two had the chance of winning. I don't know if that made sense, but <laughs> I understood it. It, it. it was interesting. Yes. Okay. Room five. That's, that was uh, Susanna, Melda, and me. And uh, would you, either of you like to contribute? Um, so just like the other group, we pick the apple in the middle, or sometimes there are two apples. We try to create um, two sides. And we also notice that if we match what the other player chooses, um, 
some uh in some of the cases that's a um winning strategy um anything to add suzanne <laughs> You're muted, Suzanne. I'm eating. <laughs> Break time for me. Um, pretty much is what everybody is saying it looks like. I thought maybe somebody would find something different. But we went up to 12. And we decided to pick two in the middle to make it uh, work so that we have even five on the left and five on the right. And it came out the same way as everybody was predicting. We just had to figure out what the other person was always thinking. I'd like, I, to, go, I like, I'd like to go further with what Imelda said. She had the idea that if we break the game into two equal parts, it's like an equation. And when we solve an equation, Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. And that works in this game to keep, uh, to sol solve this game like we're solving an equation by breaking it into two parts. One more thing to mention is that we use the strategy of studying the smallest game first with three apples, four apples, five apples, which gave us some intuition and, and led to what uh, Suzanne and Imelda said. But thank you. Room six, is there room six? Yeah, I think that was us. Uh, Kathleen will have to type if she wants to say something because that's what she did in our room or maybe Harriet or Albert or Adriana want to say something, I hope. Well, thanks to Pete, I'm, I'm Albert, hello. Um, thanks to Peter, he actually asked us first to play it and then think about our strategies. And that's when we are in limbo <laughs> or um, that's when he he plays himself in the middle and try to teach us some strategies like mirroring and other stuff. Thank you, Peter. Hmm. Anyone else? Hey. Well, um, we started off with the five apples and um, we gradually changed the amount and see and saw how uh, how it worked um, with a different amount of apples. And no one said it when we did talk, when we did uh, go to two dimensions, it, it, we tried to find the middle of that and finding the middle of that was interesting and uh, sometimes frustrating. <laughs> Thanks everybody. And, okay, uh, Oh, uh, We also took turns Paint um other group members in our um breakout room, and that was fun as well. I think there was a, at least one more one room. More room, room seven. Uh, you're muted. You're you're muted. Um, so. I'm the one who led seven. So we had uh, Miss Dana Zippy, Jaron, Brad, Paige, and Kathleen. Um, and so we sort of went over like, how do we, what steps do we take to explain these two students and how, and discussing more along the lines of how can we have this activity as like a low floor activity? And we went through and talked a little bit about each of the different variations. Um, would any of y'all like to mention anything specific? Um, this is Virgil. And, um, I like the way um, Brad took it down to a lower level because I teach first grade. 
and I thought this game was very interesting and it would be helpful to help the like first graders problem solve and just taking it at a lower level. We did play a game, Mean Kathleen, on the 3D. It was quite interesting because the first game I won, the second game she won. And then as you're playing, you're thinking, okay, how can I outsmart her move? What can I do? And it went from a 2D to a one, one Apple game. So it was it was quite interesting. I enjoyed it. I just want to say we brought this activity to you guys because this is one of our favorite activities. The other activities are good too, but this one is just so great. <laughs> so simple and so hard. <laughs> and I, um, I, might add, I might add to that, uh, that next week, next, a week from today is the regular uh, JRMF math, community math circle, and we will be using this activity. And so we would encourage you to to come to that one because you've got some experience for one thing, but you can see how we actually conduct this with the with the, uh, the, with the, the kids. And it's actually all, a week from tomorrow. Oh it's yeah, actually, it's, it's, yeah. And you, or yeah. you can send you can send your kids. It's free. Yeah. Any of your kids yeah. that want you want to send for uh, have some fun, please send them to us, and we'll take care of them. Or both. <laughs> yeah, or both. Or both. I'm sorry, where, where is it again? jrmf.org. I'll put in the oh. chat the link to the website, and then on that website, you go to events, and then you can... So just uh, link the, oh, just oh, link the right. event. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll let me find the event. I'll and it's it. it's virtual? Yes. 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 And we have breakout rooms. And there's an adult breakout room, or you can be in a kid's breakout room. So I'm just curious, in the classroom to do this, um, we'll have to use computer? No, like, no, 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 no. Definitely not. I use um, these two colored chips that I'm holding up. Okay. Um, and the reason I oh. use, I don't know if you can see them, they're red on one side, yellow on the other side. And what's great about them is that an apple looks red and then when you eat it, you turn it over and it looks yellow from, you know, getting all oxidized. <laughs> um, and um, it's good to have something like that stays in place. That's why the two color chips are so great. But you can also just draw pictures with like circle places because you want to make sure that as you're playing two things that were apart don't come together. So um, it, it it works great in person, and you can make up other configurations. It works great. And there is also a, a a an activity guide on the same page with the app that you can print out and has little pictures of apples that you can turn over and stuff like that. And it also tells you what supplies they recommend and gives you quest. It gives you lots of guidance. As Gabriella mentioned, JRMF is focused on in person festivals. So on the on their website under games, when you pick apple picking, it'll say festival guide, and it'll explain to her a teacher what you need to do for an in person version of the game. Thank you. Would be yeah. a good um, activity for a parent night. <laughs> if, you, if you run it at parent night, let me know. Um, we you know that we count that in the teacher mentoring program. We'll pay you a stipend for it. Yeah, I know like my missing stipends maybe, but um, also I'll put a link to JRMF on this workshop page. I think it's listed in the uh, resources page of our link, and so. Yeah. 